Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Levon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be following up on part one of what is an induction and talk to you about how we induce you. So what are the four steps that we can do to help you have your baby vaginally? Before I do that, don't forget to subscribe and then let's get to it. I just took off my sweater because it's just hot. All right, we're back for part two. Let's do this. So now that we've talked about what an induction is, why people would be induced, I'm gonna talk about what the process is for induction. So really, like I've said before, there's only four things that we can do. And I say only, but really there are like four things that we can do that in general are pretty effective to help you to have your baby. How do we decide where to start on the spectrum of the four things that we can do for you? The answer is another vaginal exam. So when you get to the hospital and they're checking you in, they will perform a vaginal exam and see how your cervix is. Your cervix may have changed a little bit since your doctor checked you in the office and you had that initial Bishop score conversation. And so based on the consistency, how dilated you are, how thinned out you are, that's where your medical team is going to provide you with their expertise to help and recommend the best option for starting your induction. If we are starting from the very beginning, so we're gonna pretend that my cervix, I'm gonna be induced, and my cervix is closed and thick, and my bishop score is not so hot, and I'm looking to be in here for a few days, and I'm ready for that, I'm prepped, good to go, but we're starting with the very beginning of the options for induction. Option number one, is what we call a prostaglandin ripening agent. So I made my own and these are not real, but I tried to give you a little bit of an example of what, they're, what they kind of look like. Prostaglandin is the hormone that while you're in labor softens your cervix. So if you watch my vaginal exam video, if you watch my what is labor video, if you watch my when to go to the hospital video, all of those are going to be helpful. This video is built from that. Make sure for sure you've watched the vaginal exam video and probably the what is labor video before we get into this because that's gonna help you to really understand the process. In general, when we check you, we're looking for effacement. Ideally, we want a nice and soft, smushy cervix, okay? What we call a ripe cervix. So if your cervix hasn't done that on its own, we want to soften it so that when the contractions start, that they actually can do something to the cervix. It's like my vaginal exam video when I have a ton of rubber bands, right? The thicker it is, the harder it is to stretch. So we like it to be nice and soft and smushy as thin as possible before we start having contractions. So I have my two options here, which they're fake options, but you get the idea. So our prostaglandin ripening agents are going to be, one is Cytotec, which is a tiny little pill, and you can't even see this because it's so freaking tiny. Tiny, tiny little pill is actually Claritin that I cut up. Basically, your provider with nails a lot shorter than mine would put it between their fingers, okay, and then they would perform a vaginal exam, put that up alongside of your cervix, kind of behind it next to it. This is gonna sit there, this little prostaglandin stuff is gonna soften your cervix over time. Time meaning about four hours. So this goes in, it sits there for four hours, and then you wait, and then four hours later you do another vaginal exam, you see where you're at, and maybe put in another one, or go to the next step. This is number one. The other one as far as options go is <laughs> this is this is a very sad representation, I'm not gonna lie, of what it actually looks like, is a Cervidil insert. This is actually a tampon that I cut up. Who knew what a tampon looked like until today? I do, now. I cut it up and made it into this little um, thing with the string. So the idea is that inside of this piece, there is gel hormone slash medication called Cervidil. The Cervidil goes up inside the cervix and sits there and like marinates the cervix for 12 hours. So the difference between the two, I don't even know where that dang pill went. The difference between the two is four hours versus 12 hours, which there's benefit to that. And this one disappears into the abyss of your vagina and this one it sits there and if there were to be more contractions than you would like and the baby is showing signs like, yo, this is way too many contractions, give me a breather, then you can yank this out and then it stops working. Whereas with this, you don't have that option. I do get into all of the risks and benefits in my childbirth class, but for the sake of time and understanding, I'm just gonna give you the main ones. So now, side effects of this medication are contractions. So you don't expect necessarily for there to be contractions, but if there are, then great. So long as there aren't too many, then 
awesome. We like contractions because contractions eventually are gonna help us to have your baby. Us meaning you to have your baby. I'm not gonna be there unless I am. <laughs> Cytotech Cervidil Prostaglandin Ripening Agents. So keep in mind, if this guy's in for 12 hours, then you're looking at 12 hours pull it out or keep it in, check your cervix, see what's going on in there, and then potentially another whole 12 hours. So you're 24 hours in and maybe about one centimeter, but hopefully a lot more thinned out and more ripe and juicy and smushy ready for those contractions. So hopefully this gets me to at least one centimeter. Step number two, now mind you, these steps can be done a little bit out of order, but in general, they're gonna kind of follow this timeline, is what we call a Foley balloon, the infamous Foley balloon. A Foley catheter is just a floppy tube like this. So catheter meaning tubes. When you hear that word medically, there's different types of catheters. There's an epidural catheter, there's a Foley catheter, which is for your pee, and then there's the cervical catheter, which is going to be to help dilate your cervix. So this is a mechanical dilator. It's floppy, it's soft, it's not really rigid on the end, it's not gonna poke your baby or anything. And so what would happen here is, First of all, you need to be this dilated. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, you need to be about that dilated in order for them to be able to put in the Foley balloon for you. If you're not dilated, you this is not an option for you. So let's say you're one centimeter dilated, tiny bit open. This Foley balloon is gonna go inside the cervix and then your nurse or doctor is gonna blow up blow up the balloon so that there is pressure sitting on the cervix. Now imagine if your baby has come down in the pelvis, your baby's gonna put pressure on, on your cervix as well. So we're mimicking what the baby's head does to the cervix. So this balloon sits there. Ideally, there's some traction on it. Otherwise, it's just floating around up there and doing nothing to your cervix. We want mechanical pressure on the cervix to help it to dilate. Now, you're waiting, waiting, waiting. Eventually, guess what? Your cervix dilates a little bit to about three or four centimeters, and then the Foley balloon pops out. So the goal of the Foley balloon is for it to pop out. So when the Foley balloon pops out, then you're probably three or four centimeters. Foley balloons to me work very, very well. And guess what? Side effects are very little be other than like if your body were to be like, oh, I don't like this thing, then we just take it out. Okay, so pretty simple. Side effect to this one also is contractions, which again, we like contractions when we're trying to get you into labor because your body's like, whoa, whoa, what is this thing in me? Get it out, get it out. And so it contracts and then hopefully just helps you dilate a little bit quicker. Make sense? Sometimes the Foley balloon can have two sides. So the other one would be it has a balloon here and then it also has a balloon on the bottom. So you're basically just like smushing the cervix together, which I've used both and I, I feel like the double balloon's probably a little bit better, but they both work. So we want the Foley balloon to come out and then voila, we're on to step three. Step three, I have nothing for because it is Pitocin, which goes in your IV. So the next step is Pitocin, AKA Oxytocin, just the fake form, which if you look it up or once I eventually get to a YouTube video about it, if you want a YouTube about Pitocin, I can do a whole long one about Pitocin. Pitocin is the synthetic form of your natural hormone oxytocin. Oxytocin is what causes contraction. So we've ripened the cervix, we've dilated it a little bit, we've smushed it out a little bit, and then now it's time to bring in the big guns and really get this show on the road and cause those contractions on the uterus to press on the cervix and hopefully help to dilate the cervix. Pitocin goes in your IV. It started super duper slow and then increased over time in order to mimic what your body would do if it went into labor on its own. So when you wait for labor, contractions start out mild and then they increase in strength, they get more frequent, and then eventually they establish this beautiful pattern, hopefully about every two to four minutes, and you continue having contractions like that over time, and that is what dilates your cervix over time. So the goal is you get the you increase the Pitocin until you get to that pattern of contractions every two to four, two to five minutes, and then you wait and you see how that cervix responds. That's why, like I talked about in the first video about induction, one of the risks is that it just doesn't work. And so we can give you contractions, but if your cervix doesn't respond to those contractions, then we kind of get stuck as far as what we can do. Now, normally we give you Pitocin, you start having contractions and your cervix likely will respond and start to dilate. 
Once it's been dilating for a while, ideally your body is now maybe in active labor, let's hope. The only last thing that we can do for you is to break your water. So this one, eventually your water bag is going to break at some point. It may break on its own even while you are induced. Typically once the water bag breaks, as you can see in my help my water bag broke or my water broke video, eventually your water has to break at some point and so we have the capability to break it for you. Once that happens then, Cervix here, baby now can sit on that cervix. There's no barrier between of the water bag and that helps to speed up labor, hopefully. So I have the device. This is what's called an amni hook. This is what we use to break your water. So again, vaginal exam, go in. They're just gonna go like this, twist it. And then this little tip, let me get closer. See that there? You can see it. It looks like a crochet needle. So that little tip has a little bit of a poke on it. So that just nicks the bag and then the water comes out and baby can settle down into the pelvis a little bit more. Risk of this is, like I talked about last time, increased risk for infection. So ideally your doctor is gonna do this a little bit later in the process, not start with breaking your water because we don't want your water broken for a super duper long time because that does put you at increased risk for infection. People will ask like, ah, you're putting something pokey inside my vagina. It's not pokey on the end. So even if this were to touch the top of the baby's head, I can like jam it into my hand. It's never gonna punch through my skin. They're not gonna be jamming it against the baby's head. So in review, the four things that we can do are prostaglandin ripening agents, such as Cervidil or Cytotec. The second thing that we can do is place a Foley balloon, which is your mechanical dilator, put pressure on the cervix, help it to open up, soften it out a little bit. The Foley balloon also does help you stimulate your natural prostaglandin hormones because it's freshing on the cervix and that's where the, some of the prostaglandin comes from. Number three is Pitocin, AKA Oxytocin, to help cause contractions, get this show on the road. And then the last thing that we can do is break your water with what we call an amni hook. That allows the baby to sit harder on the cervix and really press into it and speed things up. Then we get to wait and we see how your body responds. If you look at my can you induce labor naturally video, I talk about how on your uterus, some uteruses are ready to go where they respond really well. Sometimes with an induction, we give what I call just a little whiff of Pitocin, which by whiff I don't mean like literally you smell it. I mean we give you a barely just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of Pitocin and that just gets the show on the road where all of a sudden you start contracting regularly, you start feeling the contractions and you barely need hardly any along the way. Then maybe your water breaks on its own and then you have your baby. That would be a very simple induction that would mean that likely your body was ready to go into labor. Sometimes it's the little whiff of Pitocin and other times you need every single step. And that's where I encourage you to trust in your care team, trust in your provider, and then seek their advice. And then I would say to listen to it because I find that even a lot of moms, like they've heard things about Pitocin or they've heard things about the Cytotec or the Cervidil or the Foley balloon and they're like, no, 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 I don't want that. But really you may be interfering with a process that's setting you up for a vaginal birth and by avoiding one of the steps out of fear or lack of understanding, it may actually increase your risk for the induction not being effective. And so have that conversation with your provider, trust in your care team that they are looking out for you, they are on your side, they want you to have a vaginal birth, but yet ask questions along the way because you do deserve that information and informed consent, therefore understanding the process and really feeling good about it and like it was your decision that you made for yourself rather than somebody just forcing it upon you and you not really understanding what's happening along the way. Thanks everyone for being with me here today. Don't forget to subscribe, like it if you like it, or comment down below with other ideas for future videos or other questions that you want answered. If you are looking for childbirth classes, labor support, birth coaching services, go ahead and go on over to my website, which is bundlebirth.com. You can find all sorts of stuff over there. But until next time, don't forget to flex and flow and I will see you soon. Bye. <laughs> I'm starting to start to lose my mind. Hang out with, um, I think you get to hang out with. <laughs> you, you hang out with your cervical, just hang out with your little stringy thing. Oh no, I think my thingy has a hole. Oh no, maybe not. I'm gonna do a quick boomerang, that's fun. And my help, my water broke, what do I do? Video, video, the light is just too bright. I have no bloopers for this one. Um, there. That can be a suggestion for future video in the future. Blah, 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 blah. No. Bye. Bye. All right, well, I hope that's all you wanted for induction. Because that's all I got.